Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker. This video is going to be about adding a sun flare or sunburst effect to an image in Photoshop. Now, I did put a lot of thought into this and I tried to create brushes myself. I even tried to use the shape tool. None of them really work that well. And I always fall back on something I, I, I use quite a lot and that is other people's brushes. Now, I use a site called brusheasy.com. So let's go to them and search for some brushes. I've obviously done this process previously, but I want to show it to you. Command T or Control T for a new tab. So brush easy, double E Z or Z Y dot com. Now how you search is entirely up to you because there's keywords in each of these brushes and it always will be hit and miss, but I've done the search so I know what works for me. And it's actually logged me in. Um, it always prompts you to join. And there's not a problem with that. I, I really like their brushes and most of them are free. This is the only site I actually use. So Sunburst, because I know this has worked for me before. Now you could search Sunflare, etc, etc. Some of the brushes you get previews on, I see straight away they're no good. Now, the images here are sponsored by Shutterstock related to your search. These are not brushes, they're just images. There are a few premium brushes you have to pay for, but everything else is free. Now, I know this one here, when you mouse over, 20 Sunburst PS Brushes Volume 2 work for me. There are plenty more, but it will always be hit and miss. Uh, it's a free download, but you should really give attribution to the creator of the brushes. Uh, and largely, the artwork should be unrecognizable. It shouldn't look like the original artwork. Because Easy do other stuff, it's a generic license, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'll click on this one here. Under Copyright 1001 Graphics, I know this to be the standard easy license. And basically it says, however, the original easy file artwork must be largely unrecognizable. So in other words, it mustn't look too much like the original. If you're using a brush, it won't. But on this occasion, I will have a link to these brushes below. And that's about it really, because as I say with brushes, no one's going to know you've used their brushes uh, because once you start playing around with colors, how would they know? Anyway, there are plenty of other sites out there offers brushes. And there's plenty of other brushes on this site. So don't feel constrained to the ones I'm showing you here. So it's a free download. I see an advert for five seconds. On my system, it will download the zip file, unzip it, and bring up Finder. And I can look at the brushes. Uh, for yourself, it might be different. But anyway, uh, it should be starting now. There you go. It's expanding it. 20 Sunburst brushes. Double click. There's the file. Dot .abr stands for Adobe Brush. You can just double click this now and it will load the brushes into Photoshop. Loading and saving is a entirely different thing. Now, if I load them in, it doesn't mean that I've got them forever. I can reset my brushes and lose them. So I often just load stuff in. So double clicking will bring me back to Photoshop and I can actually see the brushes usually tagged on the end. Now, I've got my uh, brush panel showing, so make sure it is shown by clicking here or F5 on your keyboard. So there are the brushes. Under brush, you'll still see them, but they'll be tiny. Under brush presets, which is normally docked together with brush, or well, it should be anyway, in my opinion. Click on the menu, the panel menu, click large thumbnail. So you know roughly what you're going to get. So let's pick a brush. This one I do. I need to pick a color. Click on the foreground color here. If you bring um, the mouse outside, you can pick a color from the image. This is what I often do. And I'm just going to pick that beigey color there because we're going to play around with blend modes, etc. Let's um, make sure I'm on the brush tool. Now, the problem I have is this is a smart object. You cannot paint on a smart object. You can't use any raster tool on a smart object. And I wouldn't even paint on my base layer anyway. So I need to create a new layer. You can just come down here, click that icon, go to layer new layer and it's shift command n or control n so i'm going to use that shift command or control n call it sun and go okay right there's my brush by the way this is a raw file that's why i opened it, it will always open as a smart object um, that is far too large i'm not on my wacom or wacom tablet today so to make it smaller or larger you use the square bracket keys, which are just above your return key on your keyboard, on most keyboards. So right one will make it larger, left one will make it smaller. Left one going now, 
I want to center it around the, the bright part of the sun there. I'm just going to click down now. Now that doesn't look that realistic. I know that, but this is just the start. Now, normally I would go straight to screen mode, which we'll do now. And that makes it look slightly more realistic. Now, screen mode uh, really works like this. It says anything on my layer, the, bl the, the blend layer, that is lighter will take precedence. So it kind of brightens things up. That's very simplistically put. It's a bit more complex than that, but it basically brightens everything up. This actually is not the only blend mode you can use. Uh, there are other blend modes. Now, I know for a fact that overlay works really well. And the reason it worked for me was it took away the flares on the front of the rock because the sun wouldn't be flaring over the front of the rock. It might do, sometimes it does, but you know, it, I wanted to make it a little bit a bit more realistic. So I've done overlay and it's kind of making this orangey effect as well. But normally it would be screen or, or anything between lighten down to hard mix. Overlay down to hard mix, so these are contrast modes. Lighten down to lighter are, are lightning modes. Well, you wouldn't use multiply because it make everything darker. So you can flick through and have a look around to see what's working. Um, don't feel constrained, as I said. Normally it'll be screen, but I actually am going to go with overlay and put up with that very bright yellowy color. Right, well, I can change it in a minute. It doesn't look that realistic. It doesn't look bad, but it's not going to fool anyone. I'm now going to use layer styles. To bring up the layer style panel, you can double click here, not on the name, not on the thumbnail to bring it up. There we are straight away. You can use the FX here and I recommend just going to blending options to bring it up. Or you can go layer because everything is up here as well. Layer style and pick blending options. If I pick stroke, it will start off like this. You just untick it. I'm going to start with inner glow first. I'm going to reset to default. It's got its own blend mode, which is screen. I can play around with this if I want to. You can see the effect by just unticking it like that. Also, in this box here, you can see the effect. That thin white line is the glow. So when you start playing around with opacity and size, etc., you'll see this change. And I think it's a really good indicator of what's going on. You can see now that the glow is sort of growing from the edge there. I'd actually want it on the edge. I want it on the center. I'm not going to run through everything here because honestly, it will take me 15 minutes. Choke, you can see what the choke do is choking it inward slightly. Um, so I'm playing around with the size and I'm sticking with white on this occasion because overlays made it very yellow. Right, so let's look at this. Now, I could play around for hours. I'll just show you quickly contour. Let's say uh, light was shining across a a smooth surface, this, that would be a linear, um, normal linear sort of path of the light. If you had a bump in it, let's say a little hill like here, if you press the down arrow, it will change how the light travels over the surface. So it can create some quite interesting effects, especially without a glow, but I'll come to that in a minute. So let's just leave it on the normal linear uh, contour. So um, that's okay. I'm going to try out a glow now. Make sure it's always highlighted when you're working on it. Reset to default. It's got um, a white color there, which has taken away some of the yellow, which I think is quite good. Because when it was, um, let's try this on overlay actually. Um, when it was on um, overlay on the blend, on the whole layer, it is a bit yellow. I could get a soft light and see if I soften it off a little bit. No, that's not very good. And just to put my mind at rest, I'm going back to the screen again. No, definitely overlay. Right, so outer glow. Almost the same as the inner glow, but you can see what you're working on there. That thumbnail gives a lot away, opacity, etc. So noise will add noise. You don't really want that. Color, I might go for a very light orangey color to make it look a bit more realistic. Um, spread, definitely not. That would do that. Size again, I'm playing around with the size. I actually quite like that because it's making it more diffuse, more realistic. Now, if you play around with contour now, you definitely will see effects like a lens flare effect. Let's stay like with that. And I can affect the range of the effect across the across the glow, I should say. Um, so that's not that bad. Pick another one. Uh, that's not very good. But then you can play with the range and bring it in a little bit. You get the idea, guys. If you want to put another lens flare top effect on, I might pick one more and just see what that does. That one, ripple one there. Actually, it's not that bad, actually. So I might even stay with that. Jitter just means you're sort of randomizing the effect across the 
It's actually introducing noise. I definitely don't want that. So I can play around with that effect a little bit. Ah, that's not that bad. So you can see, guys, I, very quickly, I've created a sun flare. It's not perfect. Let's take turn it on and off. It's not going to fool everyone. If I want to make it larger and smaller, I could go to the Move tool and click on Show Transform Controls in the Option Bar, or I could come to Edit, Free Transform, which is Command and Control T, and make it larger. So uh, if you keep the Alt or Option key pressed and the Shift key, it will keep it centered on the space it was always at. I'm actually playing around with it a bit too much there, guys. Sorry about that. Um, Shift, Alt, I was pressing the Command key, not the Alt or Option key. Um, and I might move the center back to where the glue was a little bit. Um, I could even elongate the ones at the corner here by just pressing the Command key and shearing it off like that. Um, but it will move the center slightly. So there you go, guys. Press return or hit the tick symbol up above there. That's it, guys. It will look different every time you do it. And I could save these styles and put them down below. Because I've used overlay, I don't think it will work on a lot of images. It just happens because the rocks there work for me. Normally, screen would be the best way of doing it. So I've even put it on screen now. You get the idea, guys. Screen would normally be your best bet. So I'm just going to leave it on. might try soft light to so soften it off a little bit. Um, no, it's taken it almost away, which we don't want. Overlay is fine. It's a little bit too yellow. Um, what I might do now is I might um, play around the opacity and fill. Now, the opacity will uh, make everything less opaque or more transparent. But fill, in particular, what it does is it preserves the layer style. So the glows, the glow effects will be preserved, but the brush will get lighter. So let's try fill for a second. I think it's a little bit over the top, this. But that's a, yeah, that's actually doing me quite good, that, actually. And I might make the overall opacity a little bit less. I think that's it, guys. If I turn it on and off, it's not bad. It's not brilliant. But every time you do it, it'll look a little bit different. But it doesn't look that unrealistic. That's it, guys.